the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Huskies! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. It was early spring in the Yukon. The snow covered the ground, but the mountains here and there were showing a touch of green. At Pierre Duval's trading post, some trappers were holding a meeting. Three times now I come home almost empty-handed. All but two of my traps robbed. It must be your dog, Pierre. Them tracks are his size. But, Pete, why after so many years should Buna start robbing traps? He is only dog loose, Pierre, when it happened. My traps, empty, same as Pete's. Something is stealing. I've locked Buna up, but somehow he get loose. He's the robber, all right. You can't miss them tracks. Uh, Buna is pet, the best lead dog I ever have. Hard luck, Peter, but furs are how we live. You're going to have to shoot him. Well, that's that. Let's go, boys. Wait. The one is coming. <laughs> oh, it's Sergeant Preston. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Pierre. How are you, boys? Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Sergeant. See you later, Pierre. Sure, sure, sure. Bye. Well, it's long time since I see you. You're coming in? Just a minute. I want to look at the leg of one of my dogs. He seems to have gone lame. Here, Frisky. Let's have a look at it. Oh, he have cut it, maybe, huh? It's his tendon in his leg. Been having trouble with it lately. You got him long time, no? He's been one of my best dogs. But he's had quite a strenuous life. <laughs> oh, look. King, she's jealous. <laughs> Go back, King. I'm just looking at Frisky's leg. Well, I guess we're going to have to give you a rest, Frisky. Going's too tough for you. Uh, what you do with him? I never have trouble finding homes for them. Know where I can get another sled dog? No, no, not now. Me, maybe I must look for one, too. Oh? One of your dogs die? Well, not die, but uh, trappers say my lead dog, Buna, robbed their trap. Buna robbing traps? Well, surely that's not true, Pierre. For weeks, trap robbed of fine furs. Buna is only dog loose, and the trapper find dog trap near the trap. They say she's Buna, and I... I must kill him. Surely they need more proof than that. Sled dogs are too valuable. Me, I don't want to kill Buna, but only dog track are near trap. A man can cover his tracks. We? Oui? How? It's simple in this light snow. Just press them over with a feather. It's been done often. Oh, Sergeant, maybe you help me, we? Oui? Of course I'll help you, Pierre. After all... A dog has a right to a fair trial as well as a man before he's convicted. Especially since a dog can't defend himself. I know you love dogs like I do. I don't like to kill them. We'll get one of the trappers to show us a trap that's been robbed. And maybe King can help us find the thief. Pete Jackson is one who's robbed the most. Robbing traps was a major crime for man or beast in the Yukon. Dogs were shot immediately if they were caught at it, as the furs were the trapper's livelihood. Preston and Pierre were led by Pete Jackson to one of his traps that had recently been robbed. King was at the sergeant's side. Pierre had Buna on leash. Right here, Sergeant, under this tree. You see them tracks? Them made wolf tracks, they're dog. King, stay back there, boy. Mm, they certainly look like dog tracks. Big ones, too. Bring Buna here, Pierre. Come on, Buna. See how excited he gets? He knows he's been here before. And them tracks sure look like his. Nah, he do act bad, but how you tell by track? See, King's track look almost like that, too. Now, let's get King's reaction to all this. Come here, King. Find it, boy. See those tracks? King acts just like... Just like Buna, and I know King's not guilty. Must be just a scent of blood. I still think Buna's the one. Look at him circle. If track out Buna, King would come to him, no? Yes. King would know they were Buna's tracks, but he's going off into the woods. King, you got the scent, boy? Come on, 
Whatever it is, King's on the trail of it. Let's follow him. King had difficulty following the trail. No man could have done it, as it led through thickets and over bare ground where no tracks could be seen. They had covered over a mile when they suddenly heard King up ahead. King's found something. Uh, sounds as if he's found some kind of animal. Hold on to Bone up here. Oh, he can't get away. I hold leash tight. There's a creek here. These bushes are thick. Look! There is wolf at opening up cave inside the creek bank. Why don't that dumb dog fight it? King won't fight a female. That's a mother wolf. Her whelps are in that cave. She only half as big as King, but she would fight him. She'd fight anything to protect her pups. Now let me get a bead on her. I can hit her right between the eyes. Don't shoot her, Pete. She's not our thief. She's too small. But we may need her to catch the real one. Here, King. Come here. Let her alone. Uh, that dog he has led us on a wild goose chase. He just picked up her trail by mistake. No, Pete, I think you're wrong. It's the father of those pups King trailed. He's been robbing traps and bringing food home to the lair. And the father is part dog, or perhaps all dog. Oh, then Boone is not a thief. Boone ain't getting off that easy. I'd like to see the father of them pups before I believe it. Maybe you will see him, Pete. We're going to try to catch him. The snare that Preston and Pierre set to catch the dog was a rope tied to a bent sapling. It was designed to catch him alive without hurting him. When the tree was released and sprang upright, the animal would be suspended in the air with the noose under his forelegs. It was a week later when their efforts were rewarded near the vicinity of the wolf lair. We've got him, Pierre. Look at him. Isn't he a beauty? Oh, he's not wolf. He's a dog. I doubt that there's any wolf in him. That's one reason we caught him, probably. He wasn't afraid of the man sent on the snare. You shoot him, we... Seems a shame to kill an animal like that. Those are so necessary here in Yukon. But if he's a trap robber, he'll have to be shot to satisfy the trappers. Hello, fella. Oh, he's not afraid? He's been around men before. Too bad to have to kill him just for bringing food to his family. Say, look here on the ground. Huh? It is me. He dropped it when a snare pulled him up. This isn't game out of a trap. It's fresh venison, and it's been cut with a knife. Where he get it, you think? I wonder. That's funny. Pierre, I guess we won't pass judgment on this fellow too soon. Maybe we'd better see that he gets a fair trouble, too. Oh, I don't like to shoot such fine animal. Let's get him down out of that snare and hide him somewhere. Pierre, I want you to keep this a secret for a while. Don't tell anyone we caught him. <laughs> The huge husky that Preston called Lobo was hidden in a shed of Pierre's in the woods. Each day, Preston spent a few hours with him, gradually gaining his confidence and friendship. About a week later, Pierre accompanied him to the shed. Any news from the trappers yet, Pierre? They should be coming any day now with their catch. It take time to make trip to all their trap. You are sure nobody knows about Lobo? Nobody but King. I I think he not like being kept in store while you come see this other dog like this. <laughs> King gets the scent of him on me afterwards. Mm. You've tamed this dog pretty well, eh? He's been wild for a long time, Pierre, but I think he's beginning to like me. <laughs> Listen to him. He hears us coming. Uh, I uh, I think, Sergeant, if you don't mind, I stay out here and uh, not go in the shed with you. All right, Pierre. You can watch through that crack. I would like better. Hello, Lobo. I got some fresh meat for you today, fella. Come over here and get it. Come on, boy. You know I won't hurt you. That's it. Kind of good, huh? Want some more? Hey, you don't have to swallow it whole. <laughs> now, how about letting me rub your neck a little? Sergeant, be careful. There, old fella. Not bad, is it? Kind of like to have the back of your ears scratched, don't you? That's better. You can come in, Pierre. I think he knows we're friendly. Uh, if you don't mind, Sergeant, I think I wait two or three days more. In 
a few days, the trappers began to appear at Pierre's trading post with their catches. Well, well, Gene, you have nice catch this time? No, I ain't got much. My trap's been robbed again. Oh, the dog, he robbed them still? The traps was robbed as if a dog done it, but there weren't no dog tracks around. You ain't caught that critter, have you? Did you say no dog tracks, Jim? No. Hello, Jacques. You got a lot of nice fur to trade today? No, very little, Pierre. My traps again, they've been robbed. Huh, but it is funny. This time, no dog track. Good evening, Pete. You bring good uh, catch fur tonight? No, nah, my trap's been robbed as usual. Sure wish you could catch that wolf dog, Sergeant. He's still robbing you, Pete? Yeah, you got a lot of my traps this time. His tracks are all over the place. Is that so? Yes, Pierre. Pete Jackson is the man we must watch. You're sure Pete left, Pierre? We. Oui. He has gone. If he's guilty, those skins are hidden somewhere. He may not have left them in his cabin, though. If he thinks no one suspects him, maybe we find them. He's gone, all right. The cabin's dark. Here, King. Stay with me. Bring the lantern, Pierre. Go in, King. Now, let's look around. Please. Well, there is nothing I can see. Give me that fox skin we brought. Wait. Thanks. Here, King. Can you find some of these, boy? This is what we want. Find them, fella. He know what you say? It took months of training. But when I let him get the scent of something, he knows what to look for. Look under that bunk, Pierre, and I'll see what I can find in this box. Oh, there's nothing here. <laughs> Look at King. He's pouring at that poor on the floor. He thinks that is what we should find. Wait a minute. What is it, boy? Now, look. There's a trap door under here. Well, that's why he poured the rug. There's something on the floor. Hold that lantern over here, Pierre. Uh, here. Hmm. There are the stolen furs. Some of them freshly skinned. What? Pete is the trap robber. He robbed the traps and left fresh meat there so a dog or wolf would be blamed for it. Lobo probably made the rounds of the traps regularly. He got nice fresh venison. But Pete was first one to have traps robbed. He was smart enough to rob his own traps first so no one would suspect him. Put up your hands, both of you. What? Pete! Lucky I forgot something and had to come back. Now get up. Oh! Get away! Help! Get him off of me! He'll kill me! Get away from me! Help! Get away, you what? You! you. Good work, King! Hold him, fella! He's got my arm! Take him off! Hold him, King, till I get his gun! There! Now you can get up. The King's watching you, so don't try anything. Here, you're bleeding. Did he get you? Well, that shot, she clip off top my ear before she go through a window... If King was one second later, no more Pierre. We'll fix you up as soon as we get Pete back to your place. All right, Pete, get going. Remember, King's right behind you. What right you got to arrest me? You was in my cabin. I'm arresting you for robbing traps and attempted murder. You said yourself it was that wolf dog. I can prove you. That wolf dog has been caught for a long time. You have many more furs than you could possibly trap in one season right under your house. Hadn't been for that cur. Watch out, Pete. King doesn't like being called a cur, do you, boy? Yes, old fellow, we've made a double catch this time. A low-down thief and a high-grade sled dog for our team. Good work, boy. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.